नमस्कार इन दिस लेक्चर ऑन मैकेनिक्स आई विल कंटिन्यू माय प्रीवियस लेक्चर व्हिच वाज ऑन कैनोनिकल ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन इन दैट लेक्चर आई टोल्ड दैट कैनोनिकल ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन इज अ ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन इन द फेज स्पेस एंड दिस ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन इज बेनिफिशियल बिकॉज आफ्टर यूजिंग द कैनोनिकल ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन वट एवर कोआर्डिनेट्स जनरलाइज कोआर्डिनेट्स वी ओपटेन to describe a dynamical system becomes cyclic and if all the coordinates are cyclic naturally the calculation becomes very easy in that lecture i introduced the generating function uh, and i told you about only one function one generating function which was f1 so just to review if you are having a, uh, a dynamical system which is described in terms of q i and p i in the phase space and actually time t then if you want to transform it into q i p i and t these are new coordinates in capital letters then the transformation will be canonical if hamilton's equations are preserved if hamilton's equations are preserved suppose there is a hamiltonian corresponding to this as h and there is a hamiltonian corresponding to new coordinates as k then hamiltonian equations hamilton's equations will be preserved if or that is delta k delta qi should be equal to pi dot minus pi dot and delta k delta pi should be equal to qi dot so if this type of relation exists for the new hamiltonian new hamiltonian which is generally called as hamiltonian then we say that transformation is canonical and naturally by uh, proceeding with these coordinates we will obtain a hamiltonian which will be cyclic in all generalized coordinates so this is the advantage and uh we have found a condition these are these this is the condition that the equations should be preserved equations of motion in hamilton should be preserved now what is the condition for these equations to make preserved is that which we derived with the help of hamilton's principle is that sigma sigma pi dqi minus sigma capital p i uh, d q i plus k minus h should be exact this was the condition and in this condition if your f is not a function of time uh, uh, that i'll do later i'll assume it later so this should be exact and suppose this is exact let sigma pi dqi minus sigma pi dqi plus k minus h is equal to df then this f is called generating function right i told you earlier that this generating function is a function of uh basically 4n plus 1 variables but because of the relations between old and new coordinates which are 2n in number the generating function becomes a function of 2n plus 1 coordinate one is time coordinate time variable and 2n are the other variables n corresponding to generalized coordinates and n corresponding to generalized momentum now i told you that this f 
may be a function of some new coordinates and some old coordinates. We assumed f as a function of qi, qi and time. In my previous lecture, I assumed this f to be of this form and I said that this is known as f1. Right, this is the standard notation for this type of generating function. And if this is exact, that means there exists something like f1, then there are certain equations which should be satisfied and equations are delta f, the equations corresponding to f1, the generating function f1 r delta f1 delta qi is equal to pi and delta f1 delta capital qi is equal to minus pi right so with the help of these two equations and there was one another condition that k minus h was delta f delta t so these were the equations which we derived for f1 right and from these equations we also derived maxwell condition because with the help of these two if i differentiate it with respect to capital qi and differentiate it with respect to small qi i get delta i'll get delta pi delta qi is equal to minus delta pi delta small qi and there was a condition for this also which may be written as if i differentiate it with respect to capital qi then this will become the qi k minus h is equal to minus delta pi delta t similarly if i differentiate this third equation of 2 with respect to small qi i will get delta delta qi k minus h is equal to delta uh, i will differentiate it with respect to time so delta pi delta t right so these are maxwell conditions initially if your f is time independent if f1 is not depending upon time f1 is not a function of time then k is equal to h so these were the conditions which we derived in our previous lecture now there may be some uh, more type of forms of this generating function but before that we i'll explain one example that how can we derive the transformation equations if a generating function is given so suppose um, a generating function is given like if h is equal to half of Hamiltonian is also given k q square plus p square upon m and generating function is given as mu q square cot q this is the generating function then find canonical transformation equations right 
so what are the steps first of all this is the genitive function and this is the hamiltonian these are already given otherwise you can frame your hamiltonian according to your situation according to the physical conditions the step one is that you try to find that what is the type of f here f is a function of small q and q so it is of type f1 okay now step 2 write the equations regarding f1 the equations regarding f1 are delta f1 delta q is equal to p and delta f1 delta capital q is minus p these are two equations regarding f1 find find the values or substitute the derivatives of f1 in these equations this is 3 and then 4 so using two i get twice mu q cot q is equal to p and from this equation i get mu q square cosec square q is equal to capital p this minus minus of this has been adjusted with minus of p so you get these type of relations now you have to find the transformation equations that simply means that either you should have q as a function of capital q and p and p as a function of capital q and p right this simply means that to find transformation equations you should find q in terms of capital q and p and this p in terms of capital q and p with the help of these two 5 and 6 so you can very easily solve this these two equations and you will arrive q to be solving p and q uh, 5 and 6 you will get q is equal to square root of p upon mu sin q and p will be twice p mu cos q so your question has been solved because right hand side is equipped with new coordinates and new momentum only so these are the transformation equations all right you may also find whether your equations are correct or not you just apply the condition of exactness and solve it if it is exact then that means your answer is okay there may be one another part that find the new hamiltonian find the corresponding hamiltonian so for that we know that k minus h is equal to delta f delta t but here f1 is not a function of time so k is equal to h now what is h h is given half of k q square plus p square upon m but since now you are in working in new coordinates you are working in capital q and capital p this simply means if i substitute q from 7 and substitute p from 8 i'll get my new hamilton so you will do it uh, you do it yourself and find k you will get your k finally your answer will be k is equal to p root k upon m this is the hamilton in a uh, new coordinate system right now if it is said that also find the equations of motion what are the equations of motion because here these are just the transformation equations so there may be the third part also find 
equation of motion or also describe the motion right for that what we will do you see that this is your k now you will see the advantage of cyclic coordinate also in this k this k is cyclic in one coordinate only that simply means that after using the canonical transformation you may get hamilton function which is cyclic in only one coordinate and if you choose some other generating function then it may happen that you find a new hamilton which is cyclic in all coordinates so uh, we do not bother about it if suppose i get this k k is p root k upon m k is root p p into ro uh, square root of k upon m this is my new hamilton 9 now to find equations of motion first of all k is cyclic in q this implies delta k delta q is equal further corresponding to this the equations of motion are delta k delta p is equal to q dot and delta k delta q is equal to minus p dot these are the two equations corresponding to new hamilton right so delta k delta q is equal to 0 this implies p dot is equal to 0 or p is equal to constant let this constant be alpha this is from 11 right now take the 10 10 equation delta k delta p is equal to q dot delta k delta alpha or you take just delta k derivative of k with respect to p from 9 this is root k upon m q dot integrate q is root k upon m t plus some another constant of integration beta now you may replace the value of q in such a way that you have your expression in small q only so you have so many equations with you you just substitute uh or there is another way you know that this is your q this is your q so if i write this since q is equal to square root of p upon mu square root of p upon mu sin q q so another way is that you just substitute your p here you just substitute your capital q here and get q so q is equal to sorry my stylus is just creating some problem q is equal to put the value of p it is alpha upon mu and then sin q q is root k upon m t plus beta and with the help of initial conditions you can find the value of beta and the alpha is a constant uh constant momentum so this is your equation of motion so we have done three parts in this question first part i have found the canonical transformation equations which are 7 and 8 then i found camel camelton's hamiltonian or hamiltonian new hamiltonian this is the new hamiltonian keep in mind that new hamiltonian should be in terms of new coordinates only and then in third part i found the equation of motion so in this way if any generating function is given to you first you recognize that what is its form so for that if i have to bother about the form of generating function now i'll explain other generating functions which we can create with the help of 
our first generating function.